God bless you. This is Ellen Mongin from Go Tell the World. And you see I'm wearing my flag. It's again Monday. And I, a year ago, I think it was the beginning of last year, said that Monday should be our day to gather 10 men together or 10 women or 10 couples to pray for our country. Our country needs prayer. And so do we. You know, in a country of many, of many different kinds of people and many different um, variety of religions and many different um, issues that we're facing, we need to be united on one front. What would be the front you want to be united on? We could be united on one nation under God. That's for the Christians. I mean, to stand up and do our power to be one nation under God. Liberty and justice for all. That's my bell ringing. It's going to do it again. I might have to stop it. You're sounding the trumpet. <laughs> the second issue we need to be united on is everybody doing their part. As I said many, many times on air, one person cannot do it all. The Lord is coming. The time is getting short. No one knows the day or the hour. So if you hear someone say the day and the hour, the time and the season, we'll know. Time and season is, is sometimes looks like it's going to be right away. And then sometimes it, be, it looks like it's going to be a long way passing. But you know what? We need to be ready every day to meet the Lord and every day to do our part and every day to be able to say, God bless America with conviction and with, with um, desire that we want to be a great nation. You know, why are we here? Like in a family, at least in our family, all the children are glad to be a Mongan. And if they aren't, when they're little, one kid used to say, I'm going to run away. And we'd go, go ahead. <laughs> you don't want one man apple to spoil the whole bunch. We want all the people in America to be glad to be Americans and glad to do their part and glad to work together. Now, just for instance, I've said many times, Deacon and Pat are so opposite. People meet us and they go, woo, y'all are just nothing alike. And that's a good thing because we can learn from each other. I always say, if you're opposite of your husband or wife, you can learn from each other. Otherwise, you could drive each other crazy. Opposite tract, and then they can drive each other crazy. You know, you have that one friend that comes over and everything's bothering them. They're like, oh my word, da 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 Or you have another friend that goes like, wow, you have a good decorating ability, or I like your hair. And you kind of want to be around those that can get along with you because you have enough trouble each day of your own if we're trying to live for christ and we're trying to overcome sin and let more of jesus in then every day you're trying to work against your own flesh most people know themselves they know what they need to work on and for us catholics it's lent so working on our own personalities and trying to claim virtue to give out to other people is a hard enough task without having the naysayers so i made a no gripe box one time so that people would not gripe about what's going on my children, the seven Mongans, Trump is blowing. <laughs> when they were little, they had to say, if they said something negative, I would say, okay, now you got to say two positive things. I try to train them to keep their minds set on things above and not things below. But oh, how easy it is to walk in the flesh and how hard it is to walk uphill towards the mountain of God. So if you're, if you're in that category in America, if you're a naysayer or someone that's just going, eh, eh, well, find ways to solution. You be that person that gets out and makes a difference. I want to be that person today by, by doing this, this um, little podcast. Monday, pray for our country. Two, Monday and every day, begin, every day pray as well. Begin to think of ways that you're being called to roll up your sleeves, and I'm wearing red today, and do your best to make a difference. You know, it's, it's one thing to say, I'm for this or that. It's another thing to put your, put your hand in the pot and start stirring it. You know, in my home, it's effort and prayer that equals victory in Jesus. Every child, no matter how old or how young, at 5 o'clock, they had something to do to help the family run smoothly for dinner time. They weren't just like here to sit down and show up and have their fork ready to eat. eat, eat. <laughs> it was not my big thing to have a family of children that didn't, weren't able to do their share. You know, there was this old, this old children's book. And it's, it's a really a marvelous lesson in working together. There's also songs like, the more we get together, the happier we'll be. You know, the more we do for each other, the happier we'll be. And, it, and the book goes like this. Who's going to help me bake the bread? It's called Little Redhead. Little Redhead. Now the eyes of the cat, and the eyes of the mouse, and the eyes of the dog. Who's going to help me? I'm probably misquoting it. So if someone wants to tell me, my name is Ellen Mongan. Wow, Ellen at Yahoo.com. I'm paraphrasing the book, The Little Redhead. Who's going to help me 
just maybe stir the bread. Now I said cat, now I said mouse, now I said that dog. I'm just making up the animals. Who's gonna help me? Um, who's gonna help me add the ingredients to the bread? It went on and on to say each person had to do a part to make the bread come out okay. And there's also, as I'm thinking of this, there's that one scripture that says one bad, one bad um, yeast spoils the whole product. So we, I'm really paraphrasing a lot today. That's because I've been on for a while. I haven't been on air for a while because my mom passed away and Pat and I are trying to recover by kind of jumping back to life slowly. So on the air of the bread, the last is this, and you're going to love the ending of this, the book. And you have to buy a copy, even if you're an adult, because God can teach a lesson. I write life lessons myself, little children's books that have a lesson. As a parent reads the book, the child learns something, but so does the parent. So who's going to help me eat the bread? Well, I will, said the cat. I will, said the mouse. I will, said the dog. They all want to eat the finished product, but no one wanted to go through the effort of like, of like stirring the bread or baking the bread. None of that was going to be possible because they were so busy just really thinking about themselves. So today, the lesson today at Wow Mom is, let's think of others today. Let's think of Monday. I used to say, Monday, Monday, all Mondays and rainy days and Mondays always get me down. It's in a couple of my writings. And so I used to encourage that on Monday to start doing acts of kindness. Now that's simple. Many of the saints, Mother Teresa, St. Teresa Little Flower, St. Teresa Avila, and also Helen Keller had that theme song of like, like um, do acts of kindness, little things with great love. That could be a great Lenin finish line if that's what you haven't done yet. You're letting um, sacrifice, prayer, and almsgiving. It'd be a great thing to do if you could just think about who could I look out for today? Who could I do a kind deed for today? My mom who passed away used to always say this to us. If you do something for others today, then guess what? You'll feel good about yourself. My dad would say, at the end of the day, make sure you can look yourself in the mirror and be happy with what you see. Now, my dad passed away a long time ago. He passed away at 79 and mom at 97. She was like, I think, two years older than him. But he, she lived a long, good life, had a lot of wisdom. So this day, pass down wisdom. If you can't do an act of kindness, you don't want to pray, give some wisdom out to the younger generation. And listen between the lines because they'll be telling you some wisdom back. Um, I'm out of breath today because I've been I've been trying to busy get ready and then get my mail, which is almost always junk mail. <laughs> my grandma used to have an act of kindness and she did. She said whoever sent her junk mail, she'd send a dollar. My well, grandma was Italian and she was she was really not uh, in tune with how the way things work. But I did find out really quickly that if I send a dollar or five or ten to that junk mail, that I will come back with like multitudes of junk mail. Look at this. That is just a sample of what happens in my life. And so I'm trying to busily get through all my political junk mail that I get from saying a little money and my Christian junk mail. And you know what I'm trying to do? Keep my head above water. So I made a decision. I'm going to read it all and then I'm going to, then I'm going to stop doing the whole grandma thing because it bore such great fruit. Give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together and overflowing. Think of this was acts of kindness today instead of mail. Think of think if you went around today doing little acts of kindness and then they came back to you in abundance. Pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. I went to my friend Sue Siklecki's dad's funeral. His name was Mr. Dant. <laughs> I didn't know him. I just knew Sue was a good soul and I wanted to be there. It was many years ago. I never forgot. And they got up and shared about it. It was a small town and they shared with Mr. Gant. And they said, you know, uh, Mr. Gant would always come over and do me a favor. And then when Mr. Gant needed a favor, I was able to do it back. What a great word. To give and it shall be given unto you. Press down, shaken together, and overflowing. Let's stop looking at our differences. Opposites attract, and we can learn from them, or we can drive each other crazy. Try your best today to listen, especially if someone says something that's against what you think or believe. I know one gallon Bible study this last week was, was the opposite party team as me. We were like, we were on the same side of the, um, a little we have to double table together we on the same side of the table but really opposite views totally and i just had to say something you know so you know what today listen to what they're saying and then if you have to say something which is usually me it welds up within me like i have to say my piece which is that we don't really talk politics in bible study however on this air podcasting i could say what we what i believe and i believe in one god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and when he created our nation one nation under God that was in in the words that he that were inspired by those who founded our nation. 
So he'd want to fight politics, call someone else. But he wanted, but want to know Bible history or Bible, call me. It's Ellen Mongan at wow, Ellen, well, Ellen dot com. No, see, no dot com. Yeah, today I'm a little, I'm a little rusty today. Tomorrow will be better. I'm going to do another podcast because this is my one that's Monday. Pray for our nation. What do you want to pray for our nation? How about we say one Our Father a day for the USA? Let's keep our eyes on Jesus. You know, your own heart knows if you're selling the truth or lying. People can read you. Like if they know you well, they can see if you're happy or sad, if you're telling the truth or not. I keep my eyes on Jesus alone. And then that way, if I waver in something, I can be open to hear someone else say, you're off the mark. But in reality, we have to be able to search our own heart. And if your own heart doesn't convict you, you're doing good. And if your heart convicts you and you're doing something off the mark, like dissension, or lying, or cheating, or stealing, or worry, you got to go to confession and, and confess what their sin and pray for the grace that you could change. Today I'm changing. I'm trying to get back on my task after my mom dying, back to what God's called me to do, which was build the body of Christ and build the nation. Last word. Those who are in Augusta, the CSRA, Sisters in Christ will be starting again. It'll be April 20th at 1130 at Rally's um, Grill on Washington Road. You have to look it up. It's on, I, have the, I have the address not right in front of me, though. June Council will be speaking. She, we call her June the Wise Council. You all get on the reservation list. You have to buy something to eat at Rally's. They're going to a private room, so please come hungry. And we'll see you there. Sisters in Christ, the group I started, why? because I wanted to unite the Protestants and Catholics in a way that we wouldn't fight the Bible, because you know the Bible is supposed to be the living water to grow us in more like the image of Christ, and fighting wasn't in that Bible to do. So please come. This time it's June Council. She's a speaker, a writer, and a intercessor. She has a great story to tell. It's I, I title it, What's a Mother to Do? Because it's, it's when your child falls in a pit, and it's really deep. What do you do? What's a mother to do? Pray and remember that nothing, nothing is impossible to God. So as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord and we're going to be good citizens and we're going to walk in virtue and peace, righteousness and faith and the Holy Ghost. We're going to walk in the ways of the Lord and the land of living and we're going to, re and within our soul, because we're doing the right thing, it's going to well, well up joy to pour out to the one I meet today. Be blessed. It's Ellen Mongan again from... Um, go tell the world. I'm telling the world to live for Christ and be a good citizen. Amen. In Jesus' name. Bless this podcast. Hope it go to many people. If you're listening today, please pass it on. Sign for my YouTube channel because I really need people to sign on. I don't know how the world works. I do how God does. Give and it shall be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, and overflowing. Have a great day.